Hello and welcome. So my today's topic is uh, introduction to machine learning. So we will see uh, what basically the machine learning is and what are the different types of machine learning. So first uh, we will we have to know that what is machine learning. So according to Arthur Samuel, he described the machine learning as the field of study that gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. And after that, Tom Michel also provide a more uh, modern definition of machine learning, and in which he says that a computer program is said to learn from experience P with respect to some class of task P and performance measure P. So, if its performance at task P, as measured by P, improves with experience P, so we can take an example. So. For example, if you are going to uh, make a model for chess game, so here what your E is, your E is the experience of playing many games of chess. And what is the task here? So your task is the playing chess. And next term is your probability, and we denote probability here as P. So what is the probability? The probability. That the program will win the next game. Okay. So, in general, any machine learning problem can be assigned to one or two broad classification. First one is your supervised learning, and another is your unsupervised learning. So, see what is supervised learning. So, in supervised learning, we are given a data set and already know that what our correct output should look like. Having the idea that there is a relationship between the input and the output means when we are when we work on the supervised learning, we always have our data set which is having the response also. So supervised learning is the learning of the model where with input variable you can say it x and an output variable you can say y and an algorithm to map the input to the output. So here. Your function is your y is function of x means x is your input variable and y is your output variable here. Our task is what? Our task is to predict y based on the given input variable x. Okay. So see what is the need of supervised learning? Why we will use supervised learning? So the basic aim. To approximate the mapping function so well that when there is a new input data, then the corresponding output variable can be predicted. So we will use supervised learning for if we are going to predict the new input data. See what is the output of this input data. Then we will use the supervised learning, and it is called supervised learning because the process of an learning. And what is the process of learning? We will learn about model using the training data set. Can be thought of as a teacher who is supervising the entire learning process. So, supervised learning, we can say that uh, in supervised learning, there is a teacher who is supervising for the entire learning process. Thus, the learning algorithm iteratively makes prediction on the training data and is corrected by the teacher. And the learning stops when the algorithm achieves an acceptable level of performance or the desired accuracy. So when we are working on the machine learning models, we will uh, evaluate our model using the accuracy. What accuracy we have achieved? So accuracy gives you the measure that is your model is predict uh, is your prediction of your model is better or not. Now what is the example of supervised learning? Suppose that there is a basket which is filled with some fruit. Our task is to arrange the same type of fruit at one place. And also suppose that the fruits are apple, banana, cherry, and grapes. And suppose one already know from their previous work or experience. Here your previous work means your learning or your experience. That the shape of each and every fruit present in the basket. So if somebody uh, knows about the shape of every fruit present in the basket, 
so it is easy for them to arrange the same type of fruits in one plate so it is very easy if you are knowing the shape and size of every fruit you can arrange them very easily so here the previous work is called your training data in data mining terminology so it learns the things from the training data and this is because it has a response variable which says that if some fruit has so and so feature then it is graph and similarly for each and every fruit so this type of information is deciphered from the data that is used to train the model and this type of learning is called supervised learning and such problems are listed under the classification task so what is supervised learning so another type is your unsupervised learning so unsupervised learning is where only the input data say x is present and no corresponding output variable is there as you have seen that in when we are talking about the supervised learning so there are always your input data and output data present in your training data say x and y but when we are talking about the supervised learning only input data is present and no corresponding output variable is there so we can derive the structure by clustering the data based on relationships among the variable in the data so why we use unsupervised learning the main aim of unsupervised learning is to model the distribution in the data in order to learn more about the data and it is called so because there is no correct answer and there is no such teacher unlike supervised learning in supervised learning we have teacher means for input variable we have a corresponding output but in the super unsupervised learning we don't have a teacher so algorithm are left to their own devices to discover and present the interesting structure in the data means algorithm itself learn from the features of the input data and produces the output on that particular data so here is the example of unsupervised learning again suppose that there is a basket and it is filled with some fruit what is our task our task is to arrange the same type of fruits at one place so how to group similar fruits without any prior knowledge about those means you don't have any prior knowledge about the shape and features of the fruit so first any physical characteristics of a particular fruit is selected suppose color if you have not know uh, know the uh, features and shape of the fruit what you will choose first suppose uh, you choose the color you will classify your fruits according to the color so then the fruits are arranged on the basis of the color the group will be something like you will put red color fruits in one category and you will put green color fruits in another category so apple and cherry belongs to red color group and bananas and grapes belongs to green color group so now take another physical characteristic size you can choose size also so now the group will be something like this suppose a fruit is red in color and big in size you can put, uh, you can say it's apple suppose a fruit is red in color and small in size you will put cherry here and if a fruit is green in color and big in size you can say it's banana and if a, if a fruit is green in color and small in size you can say it is grape so here there is no need to know or learn anything beforehand that means no trained data and no response variable so this type of learning is known as unsupervised learning so for more interesting videos stay tuned tune and subscribe to our channel sage university bhopal thank you